This is the Getting Started page of the 27K1 ISMS software. You arrive at this page simply by getting onto the Home menu and getting started, and it appears. There are nine steps. They're very straightforward. I'll take you through them, and what you'll do in going through these steps is understand how to put together the building blocks of your ISMS. The data submitted here feeds other areas of the system, particularly the audit manager and other areas as we'll go through. So starting with the company details, number one, this is where you submit the location, can be international. You can put up a logo, but importantly, this is where you submit the scope of the ISMS. Step two is the organization. So this is where the main head office would appear, and it could also be that you can attach other locations. So simply press add and add more. So this could be a factory or a major part of the organization. Major being it's a part of the organization that can manage projects and acts as an authority for the company. So it's a significant location. And if you wish to, for each location, each major location, you can map out the organizational structure. Simply right click, add a unit, and it drops down. Step three, locations and security zones. This can be for smaller company locations, people working from home, as you wish. You can add them in internationally or just for the UK. And in doing so, you can apply this graphing tool. This is important for two reasons. Firstly, and it works through right clicking and adding a location. So in this case, building. And from building, add a security zone and it drops down to floors. So it's hierarchical. You can have some interesting organizational charts. It doesn't have to be linear in this particular case, but useful for two reasons. The first reason being that every asset has to be located somewhere. So by putting in a graphing tool, you can locate all your information security assets somewhere. And these feed reports. But secondly, this, these locations also feed the audit manager. So when you're doing ultimately an audit on locations, the information submitted here is pulled through so that you can audit what's going on in these locations. You can also have departments and job titles that comprise your business. You can add them very easily and you can build up your list of departments and your list of job roles or job titles. These will be references we go through. But another significant reason for this particular part of the app is that later on you'll wish to do an internal audit on departments. So the information submitted here gets pulled through to the audit manager. Key personnel. There are some users of the 27K1 software that only wish to include risk owners and asset owners. This may be because they've got hundreds, if not thousands of employees, and they only want to include those staff that are important to the ISMS. You can add staff one by one, in which case these fields need to be completed. Alternatively, you can go to the utilities button where you can bulk import. So if staff, personnel are held on a CSV file format or Excel. Similarly, the same is true for Office 365 or hardware, software and so forth. You can pull this data through into a quarantine area of the system where you confirm that that data is clean and then you can upload it to the relevant location within the app where that data needs to sit. Let's go back to key personnel to show a couple of other features of the system. So this individual, Jeremy Martin, Okay, if your location or if your business doesn't have an HR register, this functionality within the app can be used by default as the HR register. However, you may have an HR register already, in which case you may wish to cross-reference the individual to your existing HR register or cross-reference the staff number. As I said before, you might only wish to include a risk owner or this person as an asset owner. Because we've previously graphed out two locations, they're found here. So if in this head office, I could locate Jeremy to one of these particular locations. Well, he is a sales manager, so let's put him in the sales office. And that particular business has a number of departments, so it makes sense to make him a, put him in the sales department. And if he's in the sales department, let's make him the sales director. 
because we defined departments and job roles. His employment category has to be one of several, according to the standard, so I'll make him an employee. And who's going to be responsible for him in terms of risk ownership? So that could be, you might have an HR director or somebody else. I can search. So I could make it Jane, or if it wasn't Jane, then I can look for all the people in my system, and they're all on the left-hand side here. So I could make it Peter if I wish to. The information classification that Jeremy can access can be one of several. I can make more information classifications, as you'll see shortly, but right now I've got four in here. So I'll allow Jeremy to access confidential information. Because he can access that level of information, it might mean that he's important. So we'll give him some training due and the system has calendars in so you can nominate dates for events to occur. And a really important point now is that the 27K1 system does not come with an integrated document management solution. So if you wish to point to various evidence or policies or documents, whatever it may be that supports your ISMS, then you can do so using hyperlinks. So it may well be that Jeremy's training is found in SharePoint. So if we put So if we put SharePoint, Jeremy Training, then appears this link. So if I've got a SharePoint system and I click on here, this would take me to Jeremy Training. We've got start dates and finish dates and if people left the company. So this is how you can populate the people page of the system. You can also assign information assets and controls around these assets with respect to people. And I'll show you how you do that in the asset management part of the system. So we'll come back to that. So just for now, this is how we manage people. I've then got some four steps to go and my ISMS should be set up. So I've got policy settings. The first one is my risk treatment methodology. What I've decided to do, and this is the demo system, so this has already been toggled, is I'm going to treat assets with respect to the threats that those assets can be exposed to and then the vulnerabilities that can exploit the threats. I'm not doing it the other way around, but I've got that choice. I've also got asset valuations, and these are done according to CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. That's standard for the approach to the ISMS. But we give you a starter. So if you want to change anything, you can do, but this is a good place to get started. So when you load the system, everything with a green background can be changed. And if you want to change that wording from everyone to all, you can absolutely do that. But these policies along here all feed the risk manager module because they're all about the appetite that the client has, or you might have, to risk. So then you've got a likelihood table. So these are the likelihoods of events occurring. But in your world or with your client, you may say that an unlikely event happens every three years. That's fine. Just change it. We have an impact table. So the impacts that we have here are connected through to the risk manager, but you can change anything. If you're working in the UK, you might say an insignificant financial loss might only be £50, in which case you can save that. If you're working across Europe, then this currency would be reflected in euros. If you're working in the US or North America, this would be reflected in dollars. The system senses where, the, where it's being used and reflects the currency. But again, you can change any of this data in here. And if you wish to weight the data, so for example, if your client or your business finds that reputational damage is absolutely key, then you can weight this system. So you could say, we'll add a weighting onto reputational damage. And this informs the calculators which have been deployed within the system so that within the risk manager, you can add a particular weighting onto reputational damage. You've then got a risk score table. These are the risk scores that uh, uh, impact the risk manager. So if the risk manager assesses a risk and gives it a score of one to five, you may say, absolutely fine, I'll accept that risk. Alternatively, if you are averse to it, you have the option of treating it as well. It's entirely up to you. Lastly, information classifications. We've provided four, and I referenced them a few moments ago, but 
If you wish to, you can have additional classifications. So you might want to make one called top secret. And if we save that, then the new information classification, and you can give it a definition, but a new information classification that you can draw upon is top secret. And that might be something that only certain personnel can have access to. So it's up to you how you put this together, but we give you a great start. You've then got business objectives. Business objectives are things that the company strives to achieve. They may be the subject of continuous improvement initiatives. So you can add as many as you wish. They could be ensure that systems are available at all times. It could be let's double sales over the next two years. Whoever is responsible for these can be nominated in that first organisational chart that I showed you a moment ago. Business objectives are also used in continuous improvement initiatives, which the system will also manage. Business objectives are very closely connected to security objectives. You can add as many security objectives as you like by clicking add. And when you do so, these fields will appear. So this will be how you manage these security objectives. The information submitted here is very important because when you go into the risk manager for a risk assessment, Part of the process will be, what security objective am I meeting with this risk assessment? And this is where these security objectives will be pulled through. The other reason that security objectives are important is because if you're doing a continuous improvement initiative, you can draw upon the security objectives and, and ask yourself the question, how close am I to completing this continuous improvement? So it can be the subject of CI. Very lastly, we have the preferences. This is all about Office 365 because this is a Windows 10 minimum app. So by toggle switching Office 365, what you're doing is giving yourself the ability to get into the calendars of people that you wish to contact. And you might wish to contact these people because when you're doing a management meeting and you're discussing some aspect of security, it could be that you want to set up within the management reviews a series of meetings. By setting up the meetings, you can write an agenda for the meeting, but importantly, you can invite people to attend through Office 365. You can send them invitations, you can send them an agenda, all done from the system, and within the system, you can take the notes of the minute, raise non-conformances, raise actions, track actions through, and record everything that's happened in those meeting minutes. But you can't do any of that if you haven't toggle switched Office 365 and the ability to get into people's calendars and invite them to the meetings. So these are the stepping stones or building blocks to the 27K1 ISMS. Very straightforward, easy to use. I hope you like it.